Hello from New York, I'm Chris Hayes. With me this morning, I have MSNBC political analyst Michael Steele, Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, Ari Berman from The Nation magazine, and Bob Herbert of the Demos Think Tank. Um, we're, we're talking about voter suppression efforts in Florida, and you laid out a case of how there is tremendous disproportional uh, effect of the laws that were passed by Florida um, in terms of what constituencies they are most likely to suppress the vote of, young voters, African American voters particularly, and now with the new voter purge, Latino voters. Michael, what do you say How do you, when you hear this? Well, you know, I, I, I believe in having fair and open access to the ballot box, and I think that, you know, like a lot of things in this country, that's underreported what happens on election day uh, at various polling places around the country. I mean, people generally don't, you know, highlight the problems that may, may occur. Now that there's a focus and an emphasis on those problems and trying to deal with them, I think that that's a good thing if it means that we're going to open up the process. For the GOP, I've always said, going back to when I was a state chairman uh, and certainly as an elected official, don't be afraid of the ballot box. Don't be afraid of folks who go to the ballot box. Always be in a position, a forward position, of encouraging people to have access to that ballot box. Yes, we want a fair and open process, but let's open this thing up in a way that we're not then labeled as trying to suppress the vote, which we're not. I mean, ranking file Republicans are out there trying to suppress the vote. Um, there is a general call for rehabilitating our electoral system. I happen to disagree with um, purging felons. I mean, I think there's on a case-by-case -case basis, you can make the argument for someone to come back into the system sure. to be a part of the voting population. Um, and So my, my, my broader point is, you know, I think that the party's kind of put itself into a rhetorical hot spot unnecessarily by creating an impression that our, our, our end goal is to tell black folks we don't want but you let's, to vote. Let's be, and that is not the case yeah, at all. I mean, but also let's just be clear about the way that American politics work. I mean, it is the case that 90% of voters voted for Barack Obama, uh, African Americans, what, 92, something like that. Lot, there are certain constituencies, and this is particularly true of African American voters, that vote reliably for one party. Right. And so it is a strategic imperative, even if you are the, the most racially enlightened Republican in the universe, right? To not have, to, to create obstacles for people that you know are going to vote yeah, against you to Chris, go to the polls. But Chris, when you're voting at those percentages, 90-10, 98-2, yeah. it doesn't, you're, you're not gonna impact that vote to the point where unless you can get that vote down to 60% or 50%, you, that's a heck of a lot of suppression. You're not going to impact right, no, but these are all in Florida, Florida, it doesn't take right, much exactly. to tilt right. the barrel. 537 votes. 12,000 yeah, ineligible people, 12,000 eligible voters kicked off the rolls in 2000 in Florida. Right. That was 22 times the margin of victory right. for George W. Bush. And I have to say, one of the biggest lies perpetrated by the Republican Party, I think, in this well, election has been... Those has been of people were going to vote for the other guy, too. Well, 41% of them were African Americans. That was three Again, times the number of African Americans in the state. They voted for... Well, we, we, also, that's right. the point. we can't assume because right. that's the key, the that's key well. word is, truth about American politics is precisely that. You can assume. Right. So where where right. are then the if that's if that's the case, Michael, where are the corporate CEOs that will stand up and say this voter suppression is wrong, this anti-diversity is wrong. Where are where are people? Well, because look, I, look, you Chris, the premise, you, Chris you was the one who said. You define it with a negative. You you define you define the act right. as exclusively voter suppression. I define and, and voter, it. I define voter. it with a big negative. Okay. There's voter suppression in this country. The Republican Party is pushing it, and it I is disagree. racist. We're not, we're and I cannot the believe the that there's any. Show me. I got to send you. I got to send Aside from Ari, look at what has happened even in Florida. The moment that Scott was elected, Chris, a Republican, said, this is wrong. We're going to make sure that people get a second chance. Put all these folks talking about felons. Right. right. Second ex-felons. Yes. Ex-felons. Ex right. And so the moment Scott gets elected, he says, um, we're going to start purging. The moment Walker gets elected, starts purging. You have in 15 states since 2010, you see these kind of, with Republicans, these kind of voters present. Where is the outrage on the other side about that? Can I also just say, can I also just make a, a, a broader point? There's no reason that in 2012 people should have to affirmatively register to vote. 
No. I'm sorry. Uh, you, I, I what, some, it. Somehow, crazy. amazingly, the post office always knows where I live. But I, and so does the cable. Every, you know what I mean? Like, well, this is like, my we, biggest thing is if whether you're a Republican or Democrat, 9 million people were unable to vote in 2008, according to MIT, for a variety of problems. Not knowing where their polling place is, not being on the voter rolls, et cetera, et cetera. Instead of making it easier for those 9 million to vote, we have now made it harder for 5 million people to vote. So if you care about democracy, no matter which party you represent, you should be concerned about how right. difficult it is. I want to play, play an example. Play an example of a 90-year-old veteran um, who was sent a letter indicating Florida. They they they, they made this list that was a, a, over 100,000 people, right? 182,000. And then they actually sent out letters to the first 2,700 or 2,600 who were in that group. They send them to local county election supervisors who can then choose to send them on or not send them on. These are the first sort of attempts at the purge, right? Some of the local election supervisors said we're not going to do it because we don't trust the data. But um, this is 91-year-old veteran who has sent letter indicating Florida did not think he was a citizen. I never had any trouble. I, I have voted here for the last uh, almost 15 years. It's been here. Yeah. And uh, I voted in Brooklyn when I lived in Brooklyn. And uh, I, I really don't understand it. It's, uh, to me, it's like uh, uh, an insult. So that's that's just a, a, a colorful illustration of your of your point, Ari. Well, no, and I think the voting rights movement needed someone like this. They needed a '91 World War II veteran that everyone could say that looks like my grandpa, and they say, right. why is this guy a non on the non-citizen voter roll? And you look at those those 2,600 voters that they claimed were they th the first batch targeted these 2,600 voters. Three fifths of them were in Miami-Dade County, which is overwhelmingly Democratic, and 20 percent of those voters were actually voters. I mean, they weren't non-citizens, they were eligible voters. And so you look at that number of, if you take 20% of, of 182,000, that's 35,000 potentially eligible voters that Florida would take away the right to vote for. I, I want to bring in uh, Judith Brown, Diana's uh, civil rights attorney and co-director of the Advancement Project, a voting rights advocacy group. She represented the NAACP in their lawsuit against the state of Florida for voting rights violations during the 2000 election. And there is a legal case here. We're talking about a policy case or a moral case there's a legal case here that some of what has been happening in Florida violates the Voting Rights Act, and in fact, there, there was a, a federal judge who who, who, who who agreed with that that argument. What was the argument about how that violated the Voting Rights Act? Well, hi, thanks, Chris, for having me. Um, this actually, the case that went forward was a case against the law that uh, restricted voter registration drives. And that case, basically, what Florida did was, you know, not only were they um, attempting to put roadblocks in the way of actually voting but also in registering and so what they had done was that there was a 48 hour rule if you did registration you had to turn in those registrations within 48 hours or they could fine you and not just the organization you were doing the registration for but also the individual person and so this really had an impact on registration drives so groups like the League of, of Women Voters who have been doing voter registration in Florida for 75 years shut down their registration drive and as Ari said we also know that people of color tend to register more often um, through voter registration drives so that was knocked out so Florida has a black eye on that but then the next thing is the purge stuff and so I feel like I'm living like you know it's like the movie Groundhog Day you know where <laughs> I just keep reliving this same story since 2000 it happened in 2004 and now here we are again going through it again I, I want you to uh, articulate what uh, actually just had bore in a little bit on the Details because the Voting Rights Act is such an is is arguably one of the most important, if not the most important, piece of legislation uh, mm -hmm. passed in the 20th century. Um, I, I want you to articulate why why this was in violation of of that of that uh, very important law right after we take this break.